Hey folks, Michael Phillips. I'm with Engine 31. We're covering the Humana Festival of New American Plays. And as part of that coverage, we're uh, convening some chats in lobbies here uh, in the Actors Theatre of Louisville space. Uh, and in the case of this evening's production of the new play Appropriate by Brendan Jacobs Jenkins, I sat with Chris Klemek of Washington, D.C., Rebecca Haithcote of Los Angeles, and Ralph Remington, the head of the uh, theater and musical theater wing of the National Endowment of the Arts, and we just kicked around a few impressions, and the conversation went in some uh, unexpected directions. Okay, we've just seen the play Appropriate by Brendan Jacobs Jenkins here, one of the productions at the Humana Festival for the New American Plays. And Chris Klemek, would you please walk us through a brief description of this family saga, which is set in a southern state, I believe, of... Arkansas. Arkansas, Arkansas yes. Okay. Okay. So what happens? What, what all right, well, so we, we join this kind of fractured family that has all descended on um, the home that's about to be auctioned off in the, the wake of the somewhat recent death of this, this father. Um, and, uh, and, you know, gradually it comes out, all of the, the resentment that sort of bubbled over over who, who was involved in uh, caring for him and his protracted illness, just leading right up to his death. Um, and uh, there, are, there are further troubling revelations about the way this man may have lived his life, and you know, gradually we get more about why uh, everyone in this family is sort of entitled to their own share of resentment. Right, right. It seems like a somewhat smaller version, in some ways, with the family dynamics, a smaller version of August Osage County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's, all, what's all going on? I totally got that. Um, Rebecca, uh, August Osage County aside, well, what's your? I mean, you're you're a Southerner. I mean, do you do you take personal offense to any of the? Uh, no. <laughs> well, how did the play no work for you? Offense. How did the play work for you? You know what? I I found it compelling. Definitely, I think. Um, you know, with family sagas, just like August, you have that built-in tension of brother, sister, children, uh, you know, populating the, the play with so many characters and strong opinions and strong cast mm -hmm. is always, I, I think, going to be a win on mm -hmm. stage. Okay. So it's drama. you got built-in, you know. And Ralph, you can't, you can't really speak uh, necessarily as freely as others about this right. because of your role. Explain it. Sure. Explain it. Well, I, I'm, I'm uh, Ralph Remington, and I'm the director of theater, musical theater at the NEA. And uh, so all of my views expressed here are mine and mine only and do not necessarily reflect those opinions of the NEA. So I've never said that line before. So that being said, I, I think you know what's most. I agree with both of these guys, but what what's most compelling to me? I think the piece was compelling, uh, of course, but that it's an African American writer, and we seldom see African American writers write plays with all white cast. And I think that's a big thing. That's huge. Uh, it, it's the same thing with directing. Because in, in my personal opinion, I think there's an apartheid in the American theater. And I think that directors, artistic directors, playwrights of color are not hired simply because of their color. And people think that they can't access, they're not a part of America, even though uh, African American heritage is, is long and longer than the history of America. So, uh, speaking specifically of African Americans in this particular instance, but people of color are by and large, you know, kind of pushed to the margins in American theater. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really a huge statement that this writer uh, wrote for an all white cast. It's smart, it's shrewd, because he knows this play will get produced, and that he as a black writer will get this, this play produced, right. because it is a white cast. But also, it's a smart move and a, and a shrewd move uh, with the artistic director, uh, with Les Pickiness, uh production. I think that was a very shrewd move, and it, it, it shows that uh, people of color, black writers in this instance, uh, can write American stories that are not necessarily about their own culture. Mm -hmm. and American the culture, and but not black culture. And at the same time, this, this playwright is dealing with the long, long shadow of the legacy of slavery. Absolutely. Well. It's kind of a backdrop. Yeah. And it, it kind of reminds me of how um, uh, Fugard write, wrote uh, about apartheid. You know, he never really took apartheid straight. You know, he never gave you didn't. didactic uh, plays that like hit you in the throat. He 
apartheid informed everything, but they were human stories inside of this this big this big expanse mm -hmm. of apartheid. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting about Fugard and interesting about this writer. Yeah, uh, Chris, do you think there's any work? I mean, is there any work to be done as this play inevitably gets revised a little bit for probably its future life? Um, I, I think the conclusion is uh, a little more narratively ambiguous. I mean, I think it's it's meant to be. You know, tonally sort of uh, unsettled. Um, I had a little bit of confusion just just what was happening in the in the final. Okay, what we have, what we have, we should explain that in the end you have after the central action is done, you have sort of flash forwards in a way. I guess, and, and I couldn't tell without looking at the script, but we have a series of tableau, sort of what is happening to this house after after these these sort of awful siblings have left, left the scene, and it's kind of like flash-forward uh, action. Right, and you, right. you never know, is it just that if it wasn't staged properly here, yeah. you know, that, that could be a, a appropriate. I didn't yeah. do that on You're really kind of dealing with, you're, show, dealing with, you're right. dealing with quick cuts, these mm -hmm. like, like cinematic quick cuts right. that didn't really quite seem quick enough. No, no, we're more in timed. You know, properly, or when you can see stagehands shuffling around a little bit, back, you know, you wonder are, are these characters? Are we meant to see them? Is that uh, someone who wasn't supposed to see? So, right, right, right. Um, I mean, I like I, on the page, without having read it. Uh, I do like that that notion that we're going to get the, the sense that the, this house becomes increasingly a relic, mm -hmm. and, and all of the the pain and every the, the journey that we've been on for the prior two hours. Um, that's just going to, to fade. And yeah. you know, people who happen upon it, they'll, they'll never know. Go ahead. I think the house is supposed to be more of a character than it comes across. Mm -hmm. That just hit me. That I think that is, that was, it, you know, not to be super girly about this, but how in Sex in the City, they were like, New York's the fifth lady. I think the house was supposed to be another character. I think that maybe needs to be emphasized a bit more. Mm -hmm. it, was kind of, it was kind of, that's a good point, it's kind of evocative of, uh, uh, kind of brought to mind a uh, piano lesson, in a way. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 How the yeah. piano was yeah. a character in that play. Right. And the house, too, you know, and a lot of Wilson's plays are like that. In, that house was a character, a definite character in this play. Right, and a piano, so you get even a further nudge yes. of the super, kind of the supernatural. supernatural. The spiritual and here they play with the supernatural a little bit. Too, a little bit, right. With yeah. the, the flame and the flickering and those kinds of things, but if we're on the margin. And it's kind, of the great thing, it's kind of the great thing about seeing a play in its first production like this. You can imagine, again, whatever, if you happen to think it's a terrific new play or a very good one mm -hmm. or, or promising or whatever, you can imagine different productions down the line mm -hmm. that kind of tease that element out mm -hmm. where you really get a sense of the past. Uh, who knows, you know, that's yeah. up to the directors, the designers, the I mean, w without having spoken to uh, Brandon Jacob Jenkins, the, the playwright, about this, you know, I, I wonder if how much to have any one character speak of the house is, is something that he went back and forth on. Mm. I mean, it seems like the only character who has any, any real fond association with, with this house at all is, is Frank, the sort of, you know, family black sheep. Mm. That's an unfortunate term right, sure. in, the yeah. in the context of this play. Um, it turns up, and uh, you know, he's the one who actually lived in this house when he was coming of age. Um, but you don't get the sense that he has any real warm attachment to it either. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just, a, it's a sort of a sense of obligation connected to his, right. his uh, hope to repair his relationship with the siblings that, that brings him back here. I, I wonder if, if uh, you know, I imagine Mr. Jacobs Jenkins sitting there at the keyboard thinking, well, that's, that's a little too on the nose if I give someone a speech about, oh, how much this house meant to me. And the, so we, we don't really get that. I actually would have liked to have a little bit more of that. You never know, right? If you have somebody with the rhetorical eloquence of August Wilson, right. you just say, let her rip. You know? Right, right. That's right. Um, but, but again, the burden shifts also to the actors. Like, can, can they actually make this seem like human speech mm -hmm. as well as poetry, as well as dramatic poetry? Mm -hmm. You never know. Um, uh, yeah, I'd like to. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to kind of end with this. I've, I've come to Humana off and on for, you know, across three decades. Um, some, some years you see a play or two, or more specifically a playwright or two, where you think, you know, that's a voice that mm -hmm. is worth encouraging. That said, it's very hard. It's like baseball percentages. You're going to have one out of three. You, do, you tend not to ever find five or six out of six plays that work. Is, that, is this something that just simply we have to live with? <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe this is the one. Maybe this is one of the ones that did work this year. I think it. I think it definitely did. Without seeing uh, the other, a lot of the other plays yet, I think this play definitely works. And I think it's got some more work to do, but I think it's a strong. It's a lot of meat on that bone. 
And uh, what happens today, I think, which is kind of sad, is that too many writers are writing uh, scripts for trials for television. Mm -hmm. And so there's not a lot of meat on a lot of bones and a lot of, a lot of new scripts, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you don't see really well-developed meaty scenes and a lot of new writing, not everything, but a, a lot of it. Right. And because they're writing with television in mind, right. because they know a television producer will see it and say, oh, I can hire this writer on my show. So and lean, efficient, lean, a little efficient. thin. Exactly, a okay. little thin, and this was not thin. Yeah. This was, there's meat on this bone. Yeah, okay, good. How about you, do you feel, do you feel that, that this, we have, we, we've just begun, you know, we have many more places right, to see this. Right, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I do, I mean, for me, when I get to intermission, that last scene, if I would rather the play continue mm -hmm. than break, that's always, that, that to me is a symbol, uh, is a sign. Um, I do think he didn't, he needs to work on the kicker, but that's, that I think that's often with a new play, is that that second act is a little, you know, it's a little bit like, not sure how to wrap this up, yeah, but that I think that can be well, worked out. If that wasn't, was, if that wasn't yeah. common, then, then the phrase "second act problems" would be common. <laughs> 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 it's true. It's true. Right. Hey, hey, hey. When the camera shuts off, I'd love to talk about some of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ralph, uh, Chris, uh, thank you all for yeah. taking the time to talk about. Uh, Talk about the play uh, this quick after seeing it. So it's a different kind of. It's a, it's a, it, you're not offering your deepest insights on something. It's really just more like a quick impression. Mm -hmm. But that's a, it's good to talk about. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael.